Hello everyone, welcome back to another exhibition match. And my remainder host Dominic or Shadow Fury 33, whichever you prefer. And we are going to be going into a non-requested match. It's going to be Golda versus Anarchid on Wanderlust. Anarchid going in with Glogibot Factory and Golda starting out low ground with Shieldbot Factory. Kind of surprising they are going in the low ground. I mean, it's not totally surprising, but I... The way Anarchid starts is more typical. Like, you, you typically will start on the higher ground because it's easier to defend from, it's easier to just generally work from. Where Gold is starting from, I'm not sure I totally agree with, but... Well, I mean, I'm sure... Oh, sorry, other way around. I like where Gold is starting from. Anarchid is the one that shields. Anarchid is the one starting on low ground. Anarchid is the one starting in a way that it makes it very difficult for them to expand over to the northwest side of the map, which is why I disagree with the start location. Unless they're planning on getting this, this south section built up quickly. It's the only thing I could think of. Otherwise, I don't really understand what the logic is for starting in this defensive position. At any rate, Gorda is going in for some early raiding. Not doing a huge amount of damage quite yet, but, well, doing enough. I like this setup here. Blocking with the shields. Blocking the metal extractor with the shields. That is a great option here. That's something shield can always do. But overall, Gorda is going to be having their work cut out for them. I mean, at this point, Anarchid... They are building up a little bit faster. They have the economy a little bit faster. They have a... How do they have economy faster? Ah, they are losing one of the metal extractors. The Glaive coming in here. Does get rid of the metal extractor at the last second. Just turns around and gets rid of it. Good shot there from the Glaive. At the very last second to take things out. And Anarchid is going to be having a bit of a tough time now. Because they are a little bit behind. But say, there's a metal extractor here. The metal extractor here. What else is building... Is making metal? I mean, these don't make metal. Convicts don't make metal anymore, so I'm not really sure where the metal is coming. Oh, okay, there, there we go. Look at the minimap, Dominic. See what's going on there. Yeah, there's a three metal per second extractor that's been taken in the center of the map, which is why Anarchid is such a strong economy compared to Golda, despite the fact that Golda has a much better position to work from, in theory. But at this point, Anarchid is still setting out the main base. They're still kind of getting their all set, set up going, but the point is they have the center. They have this expansion here. They have a lot of damage dealt with. There's Golda coming in here with the commander, trying to take out, and actually succeeding at taking out this front side metal extractor, which does put Anarchid in a bit of a tight spot. Anarchid being forced back. Two warriors is more than enough to kill a commander, so Anarchid is forced to jump away, get out of dodge, and now to deal with the fact that their main base is the only base they really have metal extractors set up in. And they do have one set up out here too, but Going to while they have set up their economy far more slowly is going for what is effectively a warrior rush. I mean, it's a lighter warrior rush, which is why I didn't call it immediately, because it's... Yeah, it's just two warriors right at the start, but it wasn't just two warriors right at the start. It's not a complete cheese rush. It's actually a fairly safe warrior rush, all things considered. Same time, though, more raiding coming in from Golda, which does just make things that much harder. Like, Anarchy having a really difficult time actually dealing with all this stuff. But it should be okay, as long as Anarchy can hold on to their commander... As it does set up a bunch of defenses over to the side to at least help deal with what is being pulled in here. The Warriors can't, or the Reavers rather, can't quite push in. At the same time, Anarchid coming around with Bandits try to figure out if Golda has expanded in the meantime, and they have not. This is the one thing Anarchid has going for them. Anarchid is not dealing with, with an opponent who is expanding while attacking. Golda is trying to win just with the Assault Forces. They're not trying to win with expansions. Why did this replay stop moving? I, what the heck? What in the world just happened? Okay, that was weird. Playback just suddenly paused on its own. Alright, sorry about that. As I was saying, Anarchid, yeah, they aren't dealing with someone who's expanding while attacking, but at this point... I keep saying that. Stop saying it at this point. Gah! But Gorda, right now, they are trying to deal with all the forces that are raiding in the moment, and those forces are gone. So I think Gorda will be going for an expansion now that they don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, they aren't necessarily going to lose units in the process of trying, but that is a possible tall order. I'm not sure how well it's going to work out. Right now, Gota is going to be able to get rid of Anarchist Commander. Anarchist Commander jumping away once again, but it's worth noting Anarchist is continuing to expand while this is happening. They have another metal extractor in the main base. They have another extractor going over at the equivalent of Gota start location. So, again, all this time, Anarchid is making sure to keep their economy in a really good spot. Well, Gota is not. They're just now getting a conjure to start expanding over to... Probably over to the center. But it's very clear Gota isn't trying to win 
by out expanding, out ecoing Anarchid. They're trying to win just by pushing in with a couple of Reavers and a couple of Slings, and making it so that Anarchid simply cannot push back. Because it is difficult to get through Reavers like that, especially this early in the game. We do have a couple of Rogues coming up for Anarchid to help deal with this stuff, but it's a matter of positioning. And right now, Anarchid, they do have some radar, but the coverage is not great. It's unfortunately radar on the low ground, so they can't really see what's going on up here. Goat, on the other hand, is pretty well prepared. So, not going to be a problem for them. Just going to be a problem for Anarchid. But right now, Anarchid just not having a great time. Gotta be honest. Like, Anarchid, how are you going to deal with this stuff? It's not going to be pretty. But, they are at least able to get some shields up. They have the Felons. They have Convicts for support. They have a Rogue to help out with the Reavers. Of course, these pickets are going to be a major issue, but as long as the Felon can get in here, he should get... Yeah, there it is. There it is, getting rid of everything. That Felon doing its job, along with a massive amount of support forces coming in, and with the, ro the Rogues on top of the Felons coming in, this is going to be a forced retreat for Golda's commander. Of course, whether or not that's going to be enough remains to be seen as, the again, the Glades keep coming in and coming in and not really taking a huge amount of damage, but they are or sorry, not dealing a huge amount of damage. But finally, for Golda, they're able to punch through all these shields. Another Felon is being built up, but the Felon and Convicts need to all regenerate their shields in order to get themselves back into fighting condition, because, of course, that is the thing with Felon. It needs shields to fight. However, that was still a reasonably successful break. I mean... Obviously, these, hand, these slings are still going to be a problem to deal with, but it's not as dire an issue as it was. So I kind of like how this is going. The only thing I'm not sure about is how Anarchid's going to be able to push back from this. Golda has started to finally expand on top of their harassment, so it's not like Anarchid is going to be dealing with a lot here. So at this point, Golda is at least... They've, they've taken some damage. They're being pushed away. But Anarchid, they're now fighting uphill as Golda has their economy back up, and a couple of rogues being taken out with very little fanfare. More felons coming in to try to help out, but without the rogues, it's going to be that much harder for any of these defenses to be taken out without just draining the felon completely. Rogues are on the table, though. They are being built up again. However, it's just the positioning. These felons are going to get into battle before any of the rogues come in. And also, the convicts are not in position. Now, on top of the imps being used as well, that has got to suck. Yeah, the Felon, unfortunately, having been stunned out by an Imp, being completely unable to do anything, and the Convicts, unfortunately, not close enough to the Felon to actually help out with the shields. Just got held back. I'm not sure if there was a, a command issue or if it was like a drag select, because drag selecting will generally exclude any workers. And that is going to be that. Yeah, Outlaw was forgotten, that's for sure. But yeah, that is going to be that, as Anarchid gets taken out by Golda. Admittedly, Anarchid was putting up a fight. I'm not going to say it was just a complete wash. Anarchid definitely put up a fight, but Golda's early raid was a tough thing to fight against. So, good fight. Well fought. Kind of a tough position to fight from, to be perfectly honest. But still, you know, I can't fault them. That was, that was well done. So anyway, with that, we're going to be moving on to another request by Fugentor, who just requested a game right now. Oh, for Manu. Right, Manu 12. And this should be the last thing for today. It's going to be them versus Sparkles. Another Wanderlust game. Possibly a more even game. It's going to be them versus Sparkles. Who, I should point out, has gone to purple. They've gone purple. It's really impressive. Sparkles is a player who's been practicing a lot for the last two or three months has been really putting in the work, and I'm glad to see that they've gone to the point where they can go head-to-head head with Manu 12. So we're going to be watching that next. A bit more of an even one, presumably even one or less game. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 